Hello, how's it going? My name is Potato, and today I will be talking about snipers in Destiny 2, how you choose what sniper you want to use, what perks are good, what stats are good, how you find the perks and stats that you can get in the sniper, and then I'll go into what armor perks you want to use with the sniper that you choose after you look at all the perks and stats that you can get. First off, I'll be talking about the snipers that you want, and to start off, I'll talk about the archetype of weapon that you want for snipers. There are three different archetypes of snipers in this game. There are the 72 RPM snipers, which are the high impact impact ones that shoot very slowly. There are the 90 RPMs that are medium impact and medium fire rate, and then there are the 140 RPM snipers. 140 RPM snipers, which are the fastest firing snipers in the game, which do very low body shot damage, around 90-ish, so you can't even two-shot body shot someone like you can with the other two. So first off, to use 140 RPMs, you want to have very good aim, you want to be able to hit your headshots consistently, because you're not going to be killing people with body shots very often because of their low body shot damage. I would only recommend the sniper if you're already a very, very good sniper, because if you're not, if you're missing a lot of your shots, if you're hitting a lot of body shots, you're not going to get a lot of value out of the faster rate of fire of these snipers, because that's really the only thing they offer, the faster rate of fire and the extra aim assist on them. For 72 RPMs, they are the high impact snipers, they can one-shot headshot any sleeper, which is very important, and they can one-shot body shot if you have either an empowering rift with a warlock, and they have medium to low resilience, or if you're running a perk like Rampage or Kill Clip on your sniper, then they're the 90 RPM to try the in-between sniper, which most people would decide to use because they can still one-shot headshot a lot of supers that have low resilience values. For example, Domblade, if you have less than 5 resilience, you're getting one-shot headshot by a 90 RPM sniper. Other than that, they're also just very good because their base stats are fairly good. They have fairly low zoom compared to the 72 RPMs. Lastly, the body shot damage on 90s is actually 130-ish, which allows you to body shot sniper, then swap the hand cannon or melee, and you get a kill, which is a very powerful combination that I actually showed off very frequently in my 1v1 against Panda. The body shot melee combo is one of the best combinations you can do in this game. You can very easily kill people. Next I'm going to go into the perks that you can get on snipers and which perks are good, which perks are bad, which situations you want certain perks in. First things first, there are two big perks that you always want to have on a sniper unless you want a very very niche sniper and that's either quick draw or snapshot. Either of the two perks would work. Snapshot is better if you want pure ADS speed but quick draw is better if you want to be able to also swap weapons faster. For example, as you can see right here, my swapping to my beloved is much faster than my Eye of Soul because my beloved has quick draw. On the other hand, ADSing, aiming down sights, with my Eye of Soul is much faster than with my beloved because it does not have snapshot, but it has quick draw. That doesn't mean quick draw is terrible though. Quick draw is still a very good perk. It's just it increases your ADS speed to the ADS speed you would have if you had max handling. It's just not as fast as snapshot. You could also run both if you wanted to, but there's a lot of other powerful perks that you can run instead of the swipe bonus you would get from running both together. One very good perk is opening shot. Opening shot gets you very large amounts of aim assist on the first shot. It lets you hit shots that you really shouldn't hit. The range on it as well lets you hit shots from farther out that wouldn't normally hit because the range increase allows the aim assist cone to stay wider at a farther distance, especially with this low range, low zoom sniper. Another good perk for 140 RPMs in particular would be box breathing because it allows you to one shot headshot some supers with that sniper. Apart from that, there is also demolitionist, which is one of my personal favorite perks, especially if you're running top tree Dawnblade. Quick Draw Demolitionist has been my role for the longest time. I don't find much value in the higher ADS speed of Snapshot, but the ability to get two kills and get another grenade by the time Heat Rises is over with top tree Dawnblade is insane. There's one more good perk for 90 RPMs and any sniper in general, which is Moving Target, which gets you extra aim assist and extra chase speed. I would definitely recommend trying it out if you have not. If you also are in control, it'll give you more of a benefit with the aim assist. Now, if you maybe wondering how can you tell what perks can roll on different sniper rifles and for that I would recommend using this website called light.gg. So you can search up any sniper that you want. I have five snipers pulled up here. You search up a sniper for example the supremacy. It'll search anything in the uh, game that has supremacy in its name which you just click on the sniper that you want. You can see the possible roles right down here. For example supremacy you can get snapshot which would be the best perk for uh, that slot and it can get either rampage, triple tap, rapid hit, or kill clip on it. But that is how you find the roles that you can get on snipers and those are the perks that you would want to get on snipers the ones that i've just mentioned next up i'm going to talk about the hidden stats and the normal stats as well so i'll start off with normal stats first on snipers in general i would recommend getting handling first because of the ability to swap weapons faster which is very important unless you have quick draw if you do have quick draw i would recommend a balance between stability and range you don't want too little stability because you want to be able to hit follow-up shots but you also don't want too little range because that'll make it very very 
very hard to hit long range shots in this game, especially with some of the low zoom snipers. If you're trying to, for example, float outside the map over here and your sniper has very low zoom and low range, like the Twilight Oath, for example, that I have, it's going to be much harder to hit the shots at that long of a distance. But if you go all into range, if you hit a body shot here, your sniper is going to be looking at the moon and you're not going to be able to hit your follow up shot on the person that you body shot already in the first place. So that's the base stats. Reload speed, I don't value that at all almost, to be honest. I don't think reload speed is really that good in any situation for snipers. Now I'm going to talk about some of the important hidden stats, and in particular aim assistance and zoom are the two ones that you really want to focus on. Zoom is the biggest one, really. Zoom determines what sniper you want to use in most scenarios for a lot of people. 90% of people prefer a low zoom scope though. Low zoom for most maps is better, because if you're not playing a map like this, if you're playing Javelin 4, Dead Cliffs possibly could benefit from long zoom, but a lot of engagements are close range, and almost any other map in this game. Majority of fights are within either mid-range or close range. Compared to longer range zoom scopes, would be better for if you play, for example, Legion's Gulch, which is getting removed, or Altar of Flame out here. Now, there's also a third stat. It's not even a stat. I would say it's more of a feeling part of the weapon. You can't really put a stat to it, but the feel of a weapon, and more specifically, the flinch of a weapon, which is what I'm referring to, it's something you have to test out for yourself. There's no stat that will tell you how good a flinch of a sniper is, apart from just individual testing, but the flinch on the weapon is very, very important to making a sniper good. I'm gonna take this example right here, the Supremacy. It has snapshot, it has 40 zoom, which is not the best, but it's also the same zoom as Beloved. It was around during the meta of double body shotting, which is when you were allowed to double body shot people with a 140 RPM sniper in the game, they did about 105 damage. So everybody stuck to the Twilight Oath, but almost nobody used the Supremacy. And there's a few factors for that. First off, the Twilight Oath has lower zoom, but it's also much harder to get a snapshot roll on it. But even without a snapshot roll, what it does have is low flinch compared to the Supremacy. By far the biggest factor when choosing a sniper is the flinch, in my opinion. So I'll go through the way I tested flinch right now. I have it all written down, but just so you guys know how I test my flinch. There's this gap right here, which I go into. I tell someone to stand right there at that wall across from me. I sit here, I aim down sights at the bottom of his chin. I tell him to shoot me with a burst of vigilance wing, and as you will see in a second, I'll compare this to this is with double enhanced and flinching perks. This is beloved right here. The flinch caps out right there. I pull out the supremacy, which has the same zoom. I am not changing my armor perks at all. Supremacy flinches all the way up here. Compared to the beloved's flinch capping out at the top of the health bar, supremacy has way more flinch than beloved. And here are the stats. So beloved had about 160 to 170 pixels of flinch, which is pixels from the uh, where I was aiming at the base of his chin to the very top. But the supremacy had 250-ish about. And the Twilight Oath had 130 pixels of flinch. So the supremacy has double the flinch of the Twilight Oath. That is insane. Double the flinch just for being a different sniper rifle. The stats aren't that different. There's no reason for that sniper to have that much more flinch. There's no way to tell how different the flinch is going to be without individually testing the snipers. But that is the biggest factor by far, in my opinion, of choosing the best sniper that you want to use. So the last factor that you want to think about when choosing your own sniper that you want to use will be what primary weapon you want to use. Once you have a few snipers chosen that have good roles that you want to potentially try out, you want to think about it. What primary weapon is the best weapon in the meta at this time? So if you have two snipers like the Eye of Soul and the Beloved that have very good flinch, that have very good perks, both of them do, you can basically substitute them. And once you have two substitutes, one in each slot, you want to choose between them depending on what primary weapon is the best at the time. For example, if you want to use a hand cannon, you want to use Beloved because the Dire Promise and the Spare Rations are currently the meta. If you want to use an auto rifle though, you might want to use the Eye of Soul or the Revoker, just because the Gnawing Hunger and the uh, Trials auto rifle are both some of the best auto rifles in the game right now. I'm not sure if there's any good primary ones. That's the last factor once you have all of the snipers that you want to use set out. If you focus more on your primary shot, you could focus more on the primary weapon and try and fit a worse sniper into the role of a sniper if you really feel like your primary shot is more important. To me, sniping is more important, and that's why I choose my primary around my sniper, but you could do it the other way around too and choose your sniper around your primary. Now that you've chosen your sniper, you've chosen your primary weapon, I'm gonna go into what armor perks you should use. First off, I'll talk about the ones that you don't need testing for, which is remote connection, very very solid sniper perk no matter what. What it does is it gives you bonus super energy for sniper kills, and if you're a very good sniper, you're gonna get at least an extra super per game off of that if you're hitting a lot of snipes. And in addition to that, you also want to run double scavengers unless you're on controller. 
where there's actually a choice. Sniper ammo economy is the biggest thing in a game. If you're in the lead in the ammo economy in a game, you are in a very good spot to win the game no matter what, because you're able to drain the enemy of their ammo while also having more ammo than them. So say you're like taking pot shots, you're like baiting out a shot, you do this, you don't expect to hit them, but you also expect them to shoot back. They waste a shot, you waste a shot, but you still have more ammo than them. When they run out of ammo, you're able to just keep killing them from far away with your sniper that you still have ammo for because you have double scavenger mods and you killed them before while they're just trying to primary you down and you know they have a hand cannon they're not going to do anything to you from all the way over there for example next up reload perks i don't think you should really run a reload perk for your sniper usually when you're reloading your sniper you're not in a very bad situation compared to your primary weapon when you have to reload your gun and there might be someone closer up to you pushing you with a shotgun and that faster reload will usually save you more times with your primary than with your sniper next up are the two perks that i did some testing on which is sniper rifle targeting and unflinching rifle aim so for a sniper targeting i tested two guns a snapshot i have soul and a quick draw beloved without snapshot without enhanced perks you got 14 to 15 frames of aiming down sights at 60 fps with snapshot without enhanced perks and at 60 fps with quick draw and without enhanced perks as well you get 19 to 20 frames of aiming down sights when you put on enhanced sniper targeting your snapshot aim down sight speed goes down to 11 to 12 frames from 14 to 15 and your quick draw aim down sight speed goes down to 15 to 16 frames from 19 to 20 frames which is about a 20 to 25 percent increase definitely run an enhanced sniper targeting perk if you can because it just increases your ads speed that much faster it basically makes a quick draw sniper into a snapshot sniper almost and it makes a snapshot sniper even faster next up is the unflinching mods if you are not running an unflinching mod you are shooting yourself in the foot with a sniper so with zero mods you get about 230 to 250 pixels of flinch with a beloved knife soul if you put on two mods it goes down to 160 to 170 in both that's about a 30 percent decrease in flinch that's insane a lot of people say that the perks don't do anything but they do a ton if you are not running enhanced on flinching like i said you are shooting yourself in the foot you need to be running and if you want to be able to shoot through flinch consistently just an extra 30 percent less flinch on top of already low flinch on snipers is insane just to put it into perspective let me uh show you guys what it looks like to have as little flinch as possible this is a twilight oath with as little flinch as humanly possible right here look at that this is a vigilance wing full burst to the head it goes off of his head on the fifth shot maybe and then it goes back down onto the head that fast that is insane if you're using a sniper with low flinch and double enhanced unflinching perks with low flinch snipers you're not going to go off of the head if you're not able to run two for example next season the artifact mod is gone even just one enhanced perk gets it down to 170 to 180 pixels of flinch overall that's going to be it that's how you choose what sniper you want to use and how you choose what perks you wants to use with that sniper i hope you guys learned something new i hope you guys enjoyed the video hope you guys can choose the best sniper for your playstyle in the future and choose the best perks for yourself please like and subscribe if you haven't already if you want to see more content like this leave a comment talking about any snipers that you may have found that people don't really use that are really good for you hope you guys enjoyed the video and i will see you guys in the next one